mentioned that you've got to have credibility and that you've got to find a valuable message. I want to add something to that. I would like to add that you've got to, you've got to live it. You've got to be passionate. You've got to love what you do. And often I sit there and I just think, I absolutely love my job. I had a meeting with Gavin. We're sitting on the veranda at the Oyster Box and it's a gorgeous day. And um, we're overlooking the ocean and we're talking business. And I just thought, how fortunate. I speak all over the show and everybody's got to work. But boy, what beautiful venues, you know, in the bush, in the berg, um, at the ocean. Um, overseas, and I think that we've got one of the most beautiful uh, opportunities to travel and to see South Africa, uh, the world as well. So you've got to have passion for your subject though, because sometimes this is not an easy business. We could have stood up here and said, rah, rah, you can earn this much, or um, it's so amazing and you've become rich and famous and very popular. But um, there are also there are also aspects to our work that if you do not enjoy what you do, you will not last very long. Even if you've got a valuable message, even if it's topical at that time, okay, um, eventually you will run out of steam if you do not have passion for what you do. Manuals throughout the night, you know, early morning, wake up two, three o'clock to fly somewhere, etc. Living out of a suitcase for a week or two when you're away. So those are all the unglamorous things that you never ever hear of. And your passion for what you do, that is going to take you through that. So if you want to start speaking, see what you love, see what you're passionate about, see what your strengths and your talents are, and work on, on that first. So I would also like to suggest, I was, uh, strangely enough, asked to speak first, 20 years ago, and then I became a trainer because somebody saw me speaking about that particular topic, and so it developed so I'm a trainer and a, and a speaker at the same time. But I would like to give you the same advice that I gave a 15-year-old when we had our last meeting. We were paying it forward, and we each had to give this young man who requested some advice from the PSA. I said video every single presentation and it doesn't even matter if you are not standing in front of an audience, just video yourself, look what you look like for two reasons, mainly, there's many, but firstly is so that you can get feedback. You can look at yourself and evaluate your own presentation and then you can give it to the relevant people that you think is going to assist you with constructive feedback, not, oh, that is so wonderful, oh, you're going to make it fantastic, you're awesome, and you get up in front of your first audience and it's absolutely a disaster and you're going to be either put off or very disappointed. So please video yourself and then also you can take uh, little clips out of that and put it on YouTube and enhance your speaking in that way. So the next thing I want to mention is social media is very important. You know, when I started, I used to carry a huge TV around with me and a huge video camera and I think that is still my old original um, tripod. I've got little light ones that I that, that can literally fold up in a box this size. It's a little aluminium one that stands this high and with my cell phone nowadays. So from the box, the TV, the cameras, all of that and a box of manuals etc to nowadays where you can literally take your phone and video your own presentation and immediately get feedback from that. You can upload it to YouTube. You can market yourself on, on the net. And um, all my work was referrals in the good old days. And now I'm finding more people are using the funnel through the websites and through my Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm not very active with some of them like Twitter and LinkedIn, but I'm getting there. And I think this is what the PSA has done for me is because I think as all speakers, and uh, please assist me if I'm, in, uh, if I'm wrong here, but you kind of go with the flow, you know, then this one asks you to speak and then you get a training there and then you do this. And I never really focused on marketing myself because for me, all my, all my work was referrals. 
and all of a sudden being in PSA and everyone saying, so when you're writing your first book and, um, you know, why haven't you got a video on YouTube and I haven't seen your event posted on Facebook. So I'm just saying, I am even getting to where I still want to be with regard to that and I don't plan to do everything perfectly either. But what the PSA has done for me is I can look at it more objectively. I can see the bigger picture now. I'm not just waiting for a contract to come in, work on that, wait until the next one, then go on that one. I'm being very strategic and I'm putting all the pieces of the puzzle together with regard to marketing. Because I don't really enjoy marketing myself. I prefer standing up in front of a, a group and training or speaking. That's where my strengths are. I don't want to be marketing myself. But social media is making it a lot easier. Just be mindful, please. I've got to add this. Uh, Roger mentioned that speakers can be a bit egotistical at times. And I, I really want to say that I'm so pleased about our PSA, SA, because we're, we like a little family and we help each other and we collaborate and we talk and we ask advice from each other. And it's not competition at all. It's competition, it's called now. We assist each other to be better at, at who we are and what we do. And I think that's a fantastic uh, thing, is that we don't stand up here and say, Rara, look at me, it's about me. And I think that's coming through very strongly, especially, I don't know about the other chapters, I don't visit them, but I love the PSA members, uh, but especially my mom, <laughs> Getting all possessive here. I've got a really lovely bunch that are helpful and that are standing together as a team and that are improving themselves as people and growing and also expanding their business at the same time. So we have a more holistic view on speaking now. And I, and I can see things um, much better than I used to. So this, this uh, strategy or the bigger picture is really working for me now much better than it used to. And uh, being techno-savvy is really very important. I know in the olden days, we didn't worry about these things. And there are still speakers that do not worry about it uh, because they just make so much money and at my final cost, I don't even think he uses a computer. And he makes a fortune because he's done the right things in the beginning. And I liked what he had to say to us, he visited us. He's been a professional speaker for 35 years. And uh, what he said to us is, all you youngsters, and he goes down on like, remember, he says, all you youngsters, you just want to sit in front of your computer, in your office, all by yourself, and you want to say, oh, what business am I going to get today? Who can I connect with? What valuable thing can I say? It's me, 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 I, I, I. And instead of thinking, what is it my audience wants to hear? Who is my audience? How much value can I create for the people sitting in front of me? And there's three phases of speaking. The first phase is me conscious. So it's, you know, is my hair right? And, um, you know, how do I look? And as I'm trying to speak, I'm too self-conscious. The second phase of speaking when you're over that is content conscious. So you're thinking, have I said that? Have I remembered the joke? Oh, I mustn't forget my punchline. So you're content conscious. Once you pass those two phases and you really know what you're talking about, then you move on to audience conscious. And now I can see, oh, so and so, he's got a puzzled look on his face. Has he got a question? That person's nodding. Okay, I'm getting through there. So then you are speaking with your audience. You're not speaking down to them, thinking that you're a bee's knees. You're meeting their need, not your need, to see how fabulous your presentation is. So that's something we really drive through very strongly at um, our chapter. Mm -hmm. So, um, for me it's also about continued learning. Roger is speaking about books and um, Yes, I'm sure we can get a little list going, even for our own chapter uh, of books that we read. But we've got a growing library, and Wendy at the back there manages our, our library. Every time we have a speaker in, they bring along a book and they donate it to our library, which is fantastic. As a speaker, Linda has uh, donated a 
book to us so that we can see who it is, what they're talking about, etc. And that is the way that our library is growing. Continued learning is also creating what Roger was speaking about, instead of having a whole lot of topics, which is obviously your choice, but becoming an expert in your field is really important so that people can differentiate who you are okay, and know you for that. And I think that's important. Continued learning also means that do not be afraid of feedback. So um, don't ask your husband or your wife, or should I say your boyfriend and your girlfriend, that you just met. So how does this look? Because obviously they want to be in your good books and they are going to perhaps not be as honest as you would require them to be. So either ask someone that you know is very honest or um, get a professional to assist you and to coach you through those little rocky patches so that you can use your strengths, play on your strengths and try and eliminate your weaknesses. And that's where the video helps you so much, is when you can see yourself. Um, don't trust anybody else. Have a look at yourself and you can do your own evaluation and check out what you're doing. You'll be horrified at those times you see yourself on video. <laughs> it's quite a thing. Oh, no, I'm not going to become a, a speaker because all of a sudden your voice sounds much louder than it is and higher. And also it looks as though you put 10 to 15 Ks on. So that's a shocker. I'm just warning you if you haven't uh, seen yourself on video before. Okay, so be prepared for that one. So it's just continued learning all the time. And also go on as many courses in the beginning as you can, or trainings, or seminars, or with regard to your industry, but also with regard to everybody else. I never waste an opportunity, even if I'm not interested in a subject, even if someone else is watching a program, on TV that I'm not particularly, I always look at the presenter and say, what's effective, what's not effective? And I'm doing my own evaluation, seeing what can I use or what must I definitely not use in the future. And then Rogers said, use any opportunity to speak. And I think that is really important. I'd like to take it a step further. Anne did not have this goal of going to Singapore and she's won awards in Singapore and I think it was two months ago, three months ago, um, Anne was in Dubai. Now, 20 years ago, Anne didn't say, I am speaking in Singapore, I want to speak in Dubai. And first, she might have had a goal, but she first, as Roger was saying, spoke at the little organizations and then grew her topic, then grew her popularity, grew her business, then got supporters in. And so it grew and it grew. Please be mindful of that. I've heard speakers say, oh, they want me to talk for free. I'm not going to be speaking for free. You've got to pay your dues in this business. Because if you don't, who's going to know about you? How are you going to get to speak and get paid if you don't speak and you don't um, have a following to begin with? So it's only when you've made it in Durban and international speakers, somebody was asking, uh, I think it was Graham Covington at the Joburg Convention in April this year, and he was saying, if you make it in Durban, then you make it in KwaZulu, if you make it in KwaZulu, then you make it in South Africa, and so people recognize you at a higher level in a different place, and then you get invited to speak. Kevin gets invited, he's just come back uh, last week, uh, yes, from, from uh, Europe, he's given two presentations there, and uh, when Kevin leaves this organization, he's the CEO of uh, SN Home Loans, when he leaves, he will continue to be invited back by that uh, banking industry because he's made such a good impression, because people know him. So please don't sit there um, all smug and think, I'm going to make it big, I'm going to speak for money, no one's ever going to get a word out of me for free, because you'll never get to where these people are if you don't pay the dues in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, I wish um, many people were told that when they started speaking because it can get very demotivating as well. And then collaboration, I think, is vitally important. I've been in my own business for 20 years. I was asked to give my own experience. So um, although I'm drawing on different associations or people, this is my experience. I enjoy working on my own. 
and I have trained and I've spoken, etc. And it's been my own business. And it's only recently with PSASA that I'm collaborating and I'm having such fun with it. And, um, you know, if Roger and I do something, it's his clients and my clients. And we put it together and we create more value. So he's a winner, I'm a winner, and our clients are winners. It just gets better and better. I know that um, there was this power series and Richard Baldy from Cape Town, he um, organized it and he does it with all the, with all the speakers uh, all over Cape Town, Joburg and uh, Durban. And then he organizes this power series. Oh. You see, this is not what you do as a professional speaker. Okay? I was too fast and it didn't catch up. All right. So um, these are the people in. Take the book away, sir. Yes. Oh, you know what happened? Oh, thank you. No wonder. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I don't normally do that. I've seen, I've seen, I've been in a presentation where somebody put paper there that burnt the paper in the fire. Film that book? It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Yes, I guess plastic. Well, that could have been interesting. Your first meeting at PSASA. Yeah, 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 fine. Anyway, so this is the power series. And you had three uh, women for Women's Day in all the, um, the cities. And each of us did, um, did a presentation. And we had a nice breakfast. And we all invited all of our clients. And it was a huge success. Now, I would not have done that on my own, you know, and working with my colleagues and um, being part of something bigger, I promise you I never thought that I would love it so much because I enjoy working on my own. But with these professionals, I really enjoy uh, the collaboration that I'm getting here. So when you mix with speakers, obviously, then you're going to be influenced by who they meet and the courses that they do and the speaking or the clients that they have as well. And often, um, often we get invited to each other's presentations. Roger did one two weeks ago. He had a, a, a video uh, set up. He wanted to do something for YouTube and he invited his clients and then he just opened it up to PSA and he said, hey, anybody who wants to come for a, for a free talk, come free of charge, come and attend my talk with me. So if it's available, go and support Roger, learn a thing or two, you know, can they be just smart? And we all benefit from, from sharing and from collaboration. So, yeah, what, I, I, I saw this and I thought I had to add it for you. Because this was me probably before PSA, you know, you've got all the skills, but you can't see over the wall. And I was telling you earlier that I've kind of got this more strategic outlook on my speaking or on my business and, and for PSA. I'm so excited for PSA. It's just getting better and better. But if you don't know how to use all of the skills and the talents um, that you have, then what is the use that you have them? So I'd like to just leave you with the thought that um, there's something in the Bible. Um, I don't know where it is. But um, you mustn't hide your talent under a bush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't hide your light under a bush. If you've got something that you can share and make a difference to somebody's life, then that's what you need to do, especially if that is a calling for you that you want to give back to society. If you want to um, make a difference, make a positive difference. So we are going to leave it there. And we're going to have a short 10-minute uh, recess, and we will see you straight after that.